Hello guys and welcome to my new video and today we'll be looking at the Mage Tower Challenge for Restoration Shaman. This is going to be from a point of view of a Shaman gameplay but it could be applicable for a lot of other healers. Now, I've done this challenge about a month ago when it was available on PTR to test for one day and there's a lot of things that I have to say about this. First of all, the challenge itself is relatively difficult. A lot of people are going to be failing the first phase and they're going to be thinking oh my god i can't even do the first phase the first phase is literally the hardest part and if you can do the first phase you can pretty much do the rest of the challenge quite easily there is a lot of things that could change for example the second last phase in this mage tower where you have to heal these souls and you have to heal these npcs was extremely under tuned to an extent that one riptide one heal would top them up to full hp which when i think about back in legion wasn't the case so we'll see if that phase is still going to be under tuned when it goes live so let's go and get started for the shaman challenge so this is the vod of a clip where i was doing the challenge multiple times on my resto shaman and it's going to be different for every single healer because it is all about cc and maintaining cc on my resto shaman in terms of talents honestly there wasn't a real clear winner as long as you're running cloud burst as long as you're running ascendance i was running earth grab totem for this part of the fight i was trying with static charge and things like that but Honestly, the main part of the goal in phase one is controlling the mage. So you're going to start off the fight with the Arbalist. And the Arbalist is probably the lowest priority mob that you're going to get because it's just going to do a mana sting. And as long as you're behind an NPC, so you're going to have three other NPCs. If any of those dies, game over. So your main priority is controlling the mobs, especially the mages, and I'll talk about that later on, and making sure your NPCs don't die. So... The first thing, mana thing, as long as there's someone in front of it, in this case, the rogue got hit and it's going to get this like a magic debuff to spell it. If you get hit by this debuff early on, it's pretty much over and you can restart the challenge again. The most important part is going to be after this. You're going to get a wave two and wave two right here, you'll see, is going to have. This is your number one priority mob that you need to deal with. CC, whatever you want to do. It's going to be the risen mage. This is... In, this is what's going to wipe you. So you can see Risen Mage casting Arcane Blitz. Arcane Blitz is going to be cast on a random member. It can actually be cast on your Earth Elemental. So you might be using your Earth Elemental and things like that. It's going to be cast and it's going to do around 50% of their HP, which is fine. You can eat one, uh, one Arcane Blitz. But if the Mage finishes that, that cast, it's going to get a stacking buff that's going to increase the Blitz damage. And at that point, it's going to one-shot. So I interrupt the first cast. And then you can see Arbalus is also spawning. Arbalus, don't really worry about this as long as you're behind an NPC. So uh, the mage, uh, I interrupted the first mage cast. I could be using stone, but I'm not using stone for the first three waves. And I'll talk about why later on. So this is the arcane bliss. I can't really do anything about this right now. I don't have an interrupt. I could be stunning this, but it doesn't really matter. I'm going to let this go off. It's going to be casting on granny. It's going to do around half a HP. So you can see here, you can eat this as long as people are relatively full. Now, you can see the buff that the mage got, and this buff is what's going to kill you. As a shaman, you can purge. So as, as a healer that can do that, it's really, really important to purge this the instant it becomes available. So I purge it, and I let the cast go off because I still have two seconds on an intro. That's fine, it's casting on commander, which is your tank, it was around half a HP. That's all good. You can see here, Arbalist mana sting, I have to go behind the commander. So the commander is going to get hit by the mana sting. And you can see here, this is very important. The mage has the buff and the mage is casting. But I have my interrupt available and I'm going to use interrupt to basically prevent people from dying. Because this would definitely have killed me if the cast would have gone off. So I interrupt and the mage is going to die. Again, this kind of challenge is all about control. And if you miss an interrupt, miss a CC, it's over. It is extremely punishing. So you need to, if you do exactly what I say in this video, you definitely can do this on a Shaman, because I've done this multiple times. So the mage is dead, Arbalist, your last priority target, you're just gonna, going to kill it off randomly, going to use your Lava Burst and things like that. Again, as long as you stay beside the NPC, nothing's going to happen to you, you just have to remove the debuff that the members get. If Again, I use my Earth Elemental here, there's probably better ways of using Earth Elemental, because Earth Elemental can actually aggro the mage and be uh, the mage's target now this is going to be relatively hard now you're going to get the mage and you're going to get a soldier soldier is a new uh, mob that you don't know yet it's going to cast knife dance which is going to be an aoe ability so you can see the mage uh, appeared i'm going to interrupt the first cast now i'm going to apply a uh, flame shock i'm going to prioritize the mage straight away 
I'm gonna let the mage uh, arcane blitz go off on granny again it's going I'm using a sentence to heal up members it goes off on granny it was around half HP that's all good the debuff happened but I purged it straight away so I can pretty much just purge the mage and as long as people are full HP I'm good so the arcane blast is gonna go off on me that's fine I'm full HP there's no buff on the mage you can see here that the corrupted risen soldier has used knife dance which is the AOE ability this can get spicy this is why I use ascendance here so to just kind of equal everyone's HP out I'm kind of lucky because he went on me he could have went on the earth elemental so it goes on me, the buff happens. Now, I don't really care about purging it in this case because I have an interrupt available. So as long as I interrupt, it's all good and the mage is going to die. So this is another ability of Risen Soldiers. You can fixate on you. You can pretty much heal through this. It's not too bad. But if you get two Risen Soldiers fixating on you, this is why I use Earth Grab Totem. And Earth Grab Totem can be pretty good and I'll use it on the next phase. Now, this is the Knife Dance. This is the AoE Dance. I use my... Uh, as soon as I use Healing Wayne and things like that. You can see that I have Kirin Totem, but keep that in mind. No Covenant abilities are usable. It's only just a weak aura. I don't actually have Vesper Totem available for this. And this is going to be the hardest part, or probably relatively the hardest part of the whole, of the whole encounter in Phase 1. And I have to talk about this. So you get Risen Mage and two Soldiers. And uh, you'll notice, this is probably would be a good moment to use Heroism or Bloodlust. And I actually forgot to use Heroism or Bloodlust in this part. And uh, don't be like me, use all of your resources. But there's a reason why I didn't use my totem in the first three waves, because I didn't need to. Second of all, I need to have stone totem for this part. If you don't have a stone for wave four and wave five to some extent, you'll probably wipe. This is extremely, extremely important. So the mage is casting a cane blaze. I'm going to interrupt it. And now I'm going to use my stone totem. I use my stone totem again, like a heal of people. I'm going to use my stun totem right, right now. I used it a little too late. But you can see here, Risen Soldier and Risen Soldier, they're both casting Knife Dance. So you have double AoE ability happening and an Arcane Blast from uh, Mage. This combo, if not interrupted, will kill somebody. So what happens, my stun totem goes off after a couple of seconds. It interrupts the Knife Dance, but it didn't interrupt the Arcane Blitz in time. So the cast did go off and I could have died. But that's all good because they're stunned right now. There's a buff on the mage. That's fine because the mage is going to die relatively soon. Again, I did purge the mage. Arcane Blitz is on me. I did end up purging the mage. So if I didn't purge the mage, it would have died. The blast did go off. I probably could have inter My interrupt was a little bit late. But it's all good. I interrupted the knife dance and the mage is dead. And now I'm using my earth grab totem. This is very, very important. Probably the hardest part of the whole dungeon here. Again, I probably should have used Bloodlust or a Heroism for sure. Now, I did try, I did try using Static Charge, which is your talent that reduces the cooldown of your Capacitor Totem, depending on how many targets get hit, and how do I say it? I wasn't able to get the Stone Totem between every single waves, even if I delayed the waves, or tried to kill NPCs or the enemies a little bit slower, so this is why I held on to the Stone. Now, if you're running like a Monk and things like that, and you have a Stone, it's very, very important to hold it for this phase. So, this is the double uh, fixate. I'm trying to heal through it, like you can heal through it, but you can probably just run. And now they're going to be casting their knife dance very soon. Now, this is problematic. There's a lot of AoE healing needed here. You need to make sure to kill one of the soldiers, because double knife dance, probably someone's gonna die if they get to cast off the whole thing. So, I did end up killing it the last second. I did use a healing tie totem, and it was okay. Now, I can heal through this. That's fine. I'm still getting my mana back because I'm using water shield. So you can see how my water shield popped off. I'm just killing it. Now, the last phase of this fight is actually, in my opinion, not as hard as this wave. The last wave is not as hard because you get two soldiers. In the next wave, you're going to get a mage, a soldier, and an arbalist. Like I mentioned, the priority here, mage, soldier, arbalist. Very, very important. You can forget about the arbalist as long as you dodge the mana, sting, arrow, and things like that. It's going to be fine. So I interrupt the, the mage. And I'm using my stun exact same way. You can see the soldier is going to be casting knife dance. You can see the mage casting the arcane blitz. And the stun totem interrupts them all. This is the MVP play that's going to save you and allow you to do this. Now, arcane blitz is going to go through. Again, I had one second on an interrupt, but I don't care about this arcane blitz. Arcane blitz is going to go on me. It's not buffed. Whatever. Let it go on me. It didn't even do that much damage. You can see the soldier is going to be fixating on me. So it's a little bit spicy. 
You can use your Bloodlust here if you want to, but I don't think it's as hard as the previous wave. And the Mage is going to die now. The Soldier is fixating on me, it's going to be casting Knife Dance, and this is relatively hard now. Knife Dance is going on every NPC, Granny's getting really low, now the Arbalist is casting the Mana Sting, I need to go behind the NPC, behind the Commander. Commander gets hit, I dispel it, I go out and try and heal as many people. I'm eating the Soldier's Fixate, it's fine. I think most healers can actually out-heal the Fixate. And now I'm just basically killing off the Soldier, going behind the Commander when there's the Mana Sting, dispelling the Mana Sting, and I don't have a Stone Totem or anything, but I'm out healing it. Again, Cloud Burst Ascendance, very, very strong in this. Um, like I talked about this before, I use Earthcraft Totem, but you don't really have to if you don't want to. You can use Undulation, you can use the Torrent Talent. I don't think Talents are that big of a deal in here, as long as you know how to control the fight. And don't be like me and use a Heroism on this or Bloodlust. It is really going to help out. Now, the next part of the fight, you finished off Stage 1. You're, you're basically capable of doing this mage tower because phase one is by far the hardest one now you have this relaxation mode you can wait for your bloodless heroism to come back up you can wait you should really wait for your earth elemental 100 percent because your earth elemental is going to carry to the next stage you can swap talents if you want to now you're about to start stage three of this fight and it's going to be a, a timed event you're going to have five minutes and Honestly, depending on which healer you're playing, you're going to have an easier time with the first part, which is the flickering eyes. And these eyes are going to pulsate AoE damage around them. And once you kill an eye, it's going to explode and do a bunch of damage just to yourself. So you can see here, it did about 50%. Now, the problem here, if you're playing a monk, if you're playing a paladin, you have to go in the melee range and you have to eat the AoE damage. So what I advise for the melee, the melee healers, and this is going to be a rough part, you go in. You try to damage the eye to like 10%, you go out, out of the melee range, you heal yourself to full, and then you finish off the flickering eye with things like your Holy Shock, like range abilities. Holy Shock or Crackling Chain Line. You're gonna have a bad time as a melee healer here, for sure. As a range healer, you just finish them off, you, feel, uh, you heal to full after each eye. You don't want to kill them all at the same time. If you kill double eyes, you will die at the same time. So this is just a slow stage, and it's a lot easier for a range than it is for a melee. You might even have to stack some... I don't know, defensive gear and use defensives, bubble and things like that, cocoon, because this is going to be really awkward for a melee. Now, after this, the stage three is, this is irrelevant. The dominator bats and things like that, they really, the bats don't do anything. The main dominator doesn't do anything. It's literally just DPS and that's it. There's nothing really special to this. You can almost skip it. It just doesn't do anything. Now, the next phase is going to be something that you need to be aware of. There's going to be three NPCs here. And you can see here, after I open the door, you need to uh, decurse this NPC, the one that was running kind of fear, and you need to heal up these souls. So you can heal up these souls with just your random, like, you know, it doesn't take a, a lot, just your Riptide, Healing Surge, or whatever. And you're going to use these souls as, as decoys, as basically uh, dummy targets that you're going to hide behind, because the Risen Arbalist is going to do the exact same thing. It's going to be use a, a, do the arrow ability, and you need to hide. Now, this Arbalist, I've tried it out on the... Again, when I was testing out, you can just stun it. So right now, I actually use my capacitor totem and I run behind the NPC. But you can see here, if you stun during the animation, you don't actually have to run and you can just DPS. The basic idea here, the second it does the arrow, you need to run behind the NPC and it's going to get rid of that NPC. So you need to have enough DPS to kill this NPC before the three friendly NPCs are dead. So it's not too hard, it's not too bad. Now, the next phase um, is suspiciously... Don't don't take this for granted. Because I've failed this a couple of times because I didn't really care about this. So these orbs can become really problematic if you get hit by it. All They they just require one hit, so as a Resto Shaman Frost Shock. Frost Shock them all and they become untargetable and it's all good. If you're a Druid, Moonfire, Sunfire and things like that. Don't take this for granted. I've failed this multiple times before because I just didn't really care about this phase. Now, this is going to be a relatively hard phase, but it kind of becomes completely irrelevant if you have your Earth Elemental. So, the Corruptor here is going to have a cast associated with it that needs to be interrupted, but you don't care. The Mind Spike right here. You don't really care because the Mind Spike is going to go on your Earth Elemental all of the time. So, you can focus on the eyes. You're going to have to kill the eyes here. And they're going to do the same thing that they did at the start of the phase. They're going to explode and deal AoE damage. And you're also going to get these blades. These blades are actually not that bad in terms of the damage that they deal. So you can actually stand in them. But as long as you're not low HP when you kill the eye, you're good. Again, 
you're using Earth Elemental, Mind Spike is being cast on Earth Elemental, my Earth Elemental is like 80% HP, I'm, I'm moving on to the next time. So I'm using Flame Shock, I'm using my Lava Burst, I actually popped a defensive there, there before the eye exploded. The Mind Spike is going with my Earth Elemental, you can see Earth Elemental HP is still about 50%. I kind of get hit by the blades here, and the damage here is not too bad. So you can definitely stand in some of them if you really have to. I'm going to kill off the second eye. Now, you can see I went 50% HP. If you're not a Resto Shaman in this case, you're going to have to deal with the stones, with the interrupts here. And it's going to be a lot spicier. But if you're a Resto Shaman, Earth Elemental is going to carry through this phase a lot. Now, if you're struggling with this, you can use Bloodlust Heroism and wait for it after the next stage. Because when you kill the Dread Corruptor, again, my Earth Elemental just died or is about to die. Um, but the Corruptor is about to be killed off, so I don't really care. I'm going to interrupt it when I can. It doesn't matter for me, I'm a Resto Shaman, it's very, very simple. This is the stage, again, where you can, if you use Bloodless Heroism, you can wait for 10 minutes. If you want to swap talents, and I actually did swap talents here, because you don't need Earth Grab for the next part. I really did swap to Spirit Wolf, I thought it was really, really important. Um, you can go to, I have experimented with APT. And I'll talk about why APT might actually be working. You don't have to go Torrent. You can go Undulation. You can go Unleash Life. Honestly, I don't think there's any mandatory talents outside of Cloud Burst and Ascendance. I think these are going to carry you in the next phases. So now we're going to phase 5 or stage 5. And this is the one that was extremely on the tune. Now your NPC players here, the three NPC players are going to be fighting. They're going to be fighting each other and you need to do some sort of, you know, some passive healing to them now i use like things like healing rain and just cloud burst and it was more than if you go back i'm using things like uh healing rain and you can see the souls of the mages here that i have 10 percent hp i said that it was extremely on the tune i have my cloud burst running and it requires like one riptide one healing search to get them to full hp my cloud burst actually goes off this instant and you can see here all of these get healed to full so this is almost an irrelevant phase because a lot of your healing abilities are going to be able to top them up. What you want to do is you want to heal every single one of those uh, souls. I talked about this at the start of the video. Back in Legion, it was a lot harder. You had to manage your cooldowns and it was way, way, way harder to get them all to full HP. You can see here just one healing surge is going to get them to full HP. Now, you can see here what I'm doing. I'm letting this soul go through. And there's a specific reason why I'm letting this soul go through. Because if you don't heal all of the souls, you will have this moment where you can drink and get full mana. And getting full mana for the next stage is going to be extremely important. So I played it safe and I let one soul go through. You can see my mana is around 80%. Um, but I'm healing all the rest of them. I used the sentence. I really didn't have to use the sentence. I kind of messed up here. Honestly, if you're trying to min-max, don't use the sentence for this. You don't really need it. But at the end of this phase... I let one person go through, and you can see me here, I'm actually drinking at this moment. After I kill this off, I go out of combat, because I let one soul go through, and I am start drinking. And I know the animation is not really shown properly, because I'm in Ascendance, but I get full mana. And now you're gonna get that one soul that went through, and you have to defeat it. But the most important part here is that I wanted to play safe, I wanted to make sure that I'm gonna get full mana for the next phase, because the next phase is going to be probably the second hardest part of the whole fight and now you're going to i can almost skip to it this is the soul that went through i don't want to waste too much mana i'm using like my cheap heal heal abilities here and i kill it and straight afterwards you're going into the last phase i use bloodless heroism you kind of have to use bloodless heroism and you can see why at the end of the video because there's going to be this is pretty tight with even the gear level that i had so the first thing that the boss is going to do and it's not always in the same order, unfortunately. There were times when it was desync, but it's going to jump on you and it's going to put a puddle underneath you. You're going to run out of the puddle straight away, and then afterwards, you're going to get a debuff. Now, the debuff is not really shown on my grid too, but I'm going to fix that in the future. There's going to be a debuff that's over your head, and you can see here, six seconds left. What's going to happen is that there's going to be AoE damage going from you based on how much HP you have. If you're full HP when this debuff goes off, everyone's going to die. And the, the fight is going to be over. So what you want to do, you want to be the lowest possible HP. And this is why you step in the green pool to lower your HP. So I'm around 30%, 40% HP at this given moment. I feel that's a really good balance to have. Because when the debuff goes off, it's going to do the AoE damage based on how much missing, missing HP you have. You don't want to be too low because the boss is going to jump right afterwards. 
So the debuff is gonna run out in about two seconds. I'm using my Spirit Wolf. Again, I use my Spirit Wolf talent, which is actually pretty good here. I'm also using Earth and Wall Totem um, to kind of like stabilize myself. So debuff goes off in one second. AoE damage. Everyone goes quite low. Again, if one of the NPCs dies, it's going to be trouble. So everyone goes really low. And the next thing is going to happen. The boss is going to jump on me. So this is why I don't want to be like 10%. If I'm 10% HP, the boss is going to kill me. So it jumps and it puts green stuff on the ground. Rinse and repeat throughout the whole fight. This is why I don't really use Cloud Burst Totem here that much. You probably could use something else, but I'm not using Cloud Burst Totem that much. Unless, if you are using Cloud Burst Totem, make sure that you're timing it in such a way that it's not going to heal you to full when you have the debuff. That's very, very important. And you can see here, there's quite a lot of, it's quite a long fight. And this is where the desync is happening. So now you saw I have the debuff for 6 seconds, but the boss is also jumping on me. So be aware of the fact that it's not always following the exact same routine. So I nearly died here because I wasn't expecting that. So I have about 20% HP. Uh, the debuff is about to expire in a couple of seconds. So you're not always going to get the same exact rotation. But you can see here the debuff is about to go off. I'm not full HP. What you basically want to do is... You're gonna get the debuff, you wanna make sure you're low, and the second the debuff expires, you want to have some sort of instant emergency heal that's gonna top you up, because there's probably going to be a jump right afterwards. So that's the basic idea of the whole thing, and you don't want to go all over the place in the room. You want to make sure that, and you'll see why, you want to make sure to put the green puddles as close to each other as you can. Again, weird these thing at that moment. Where I get the debuff and the jump at the same time. The debuff expiring in, in two seconds. Uh, and then I top myself up instantly with something like Riptide or Healing Surge, depending on what I need. Again, you need to keep the NPCs alive. I do sometimes use Cloud Burst Totem, but you need to time it properly in a way. Now, the thing is about this fight, or this stage of the fight. If you die, the fight is not over. So, technically, if you die and the boss is like 10-20% HP... There's a high chance that the NPCs are going to finish off the boss. This is why I tried to experiment with the APT totem. I didn't get to experiment with it fully. But I'm assuming that if you do use APT totem, if you do die, as long as the NPCs are not dead, you're fine. Because you can finish off this fight. So this is something to consider because the fight is not over the second you die. So the boss is around 28%. We're just doing rinse and repeat. You can see I'm running out of room already. And this is something that I use Bloodlust on. So I, I have to jump. I get the debuff. I have 6 seconds on the debuff. I'm trying to get myself lower. I'm about 30% HP. Uh, it's about to expire in a second. Now I use my Spirit, uh, spirit Wolf to reduce some of the damage taken. And now I move on to the next part. You can see that the boss is around 16. And the room is pretty much filled. So if you don't optimize the space that you have, you're going to run out of the space. I literally killed this boss on the last on the last square available. So the debuff is running out in two seconds. I'm really low HP. I'm topping off everyone else. The boss is going to jump and it dies. And that was like the last square that I had left. So this is just to showcase that it is pretty tight and it is... You have to deal damage, you have to heal properly, and it is a hard challenge. You need to know exactly what to do. I hope this video has helped you. There's a lot of different ways to optimize the talent build. Some healers are going to have a way harder time than other healers. If you're a healer that has a lot of CC, something like a Resto Jude, I feel like Resto Jude can do this quite well. Because you have a lot of CC, especially CC that you can spam over and over and over again. Which really helps you in Phase 1. Phase 3 is all about control. And again, there is going to be healers that are going to have a really, really hard time. Just make sure to educate yourself about each phase because there is nothing worse. And believe me, that happened to me a couple of times. There is nothing worse about dying on the last phase and then having to go through the whole mage tower again. Because it does take concentration. It does take time. I consider the mage tower to be one of the hardest solo experiences you can do in this game. That's going to teach you every single aspect of your class. So... Guys, let me know how I feel about this video. Let me know if it was helpful. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. It helps me to continue with the channel. Thank you guys and I'll see you in my next video.